Welcome to Inspired Vinyasa. My name is Sandra, and we are starting out in a seated position with the eyes closed. We're going to take a deep breath in through the nose. Big exhale. And just starting to invite in your calm and your peace, letting everything else go. Take another deep breath in and let it go. Go ahead and inhale the arms all the way up. Bring the palms together and release the hands in Anjali Mudra home to your heart to set your intention for your practice. When you're done, release your hands, palms down over the knees. We're going to find our seated cat cow. And you just go ahead and explore warming up the spine while I give you a little preface into our theme this morning. So I want to remind you first that uh, we're practicing ahimsa, and that means listening to your body, non-violence, right, non-harming. Um, I'm leading us today into kind of a fun pose that we haven't done before. It's a newer yoga pose, and what I mean by newer is it's not one of the original poses you would find if you, you went back through uh, texts or scriptures. Um, it's not as difficult as it looks. I promise you that. It's actually rather easy. Um, it's going to look hard, but it's not. And I wouldn't teach it over video if I thought it was going to be too difficult, so don't panic on me. Um, what else? We are so going to warm up to it. I have a lot of uh, ideas planned in our sequence to help you get into this pose, and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised that it really is a whole lot easier than it looks. So the name of this pose is Baby Grasshopper. If you want to learn how to do actual grasshopper pose, keep going with that seated cat cow for a moment. Um, you can go to my Facebook page. I have a really old video up, probably from like seven years ago, I think, of showing you how to do grasshopper, but that one is more challenging. We're doing baby grasshopper. So our theme then is about the symbolism of grasshoppers, and that will lead us up to the pose near the end of our sequence. All right, sit up nice and tall. Inhale both arms. Exhale, side bend to the right. Stretch it out. So grasshoppers actually do have a lot of symbolism to them. And if you resonate with grasshoppers, come back to center. Let's take the other arm up, side bend to the left. Perhaps they're your totem animal. So what do I mean you resonate with them? It might mean you are drawn to them, you collect them, you see them all the time. Um, you know, and especially if you're thinking, well, I'm not drawn to them, but man, I've seen a lot lately. Well, that would be a sign to look into their meaning, come back to center, and kind of figure out what they're trying to tell you. And so that's what we're gonna just kind of discuss. If you dream of a grasshopper, it has a little bit different meaning because it depends on how you dreamt about it, so then you should get on Google and check that out. All right, what I want you to do first, I want you to straighten up both legs, flex the feet. I know we have not warmed up the legs. I don't want you to go and do a, a you know, a huge fold. I, all I want you to do is plant the hands, sit up nice and tall, hinge forward until you begin to feel that fold, and I want you to stop right there. I want you just to remember where you are so you can see how much more flexible we are as we warm up and get through the sequence here. Push the backs of the legs down. They're going to start to loosen up. So you might be able to come a little farther, but I don't want you going into a full fold. We're just finding that edge, you know, like right here. I can kind of feel this in my low back. I feel it in the hamstrings, but more of my back is stopping me at the moment because I haven't warmed it up. So that's what I want you to notice, kind of like a body scan in this pose. Hold it here. Sit up taller. Deepen the breath. And then 
just slowly come back up. So just remembering where you were. So we have something to gauge by, right? And then let's just come around in the table. We're gonna start warming up here. We're gonna find our actual cat cow. We just did seated, so. Ah, exhaling in cat, inhaling in cow. Couple more times. So some say that grasshoppers are primarily totem or spirit animals for people who are creative. I think that correlates with, you know, grasshoppers have these big eyes that can see all around. And so that, that makes them um, able to see beyond what's there. Like creative people can do that, right? Um, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. That also makes them symbolic of being a visionary. So somebody who maybe gets a goal or a vision in their mind and can see how to get there. But take the visionary also as somebody who is intuitive and listening to their intuition. Go ahead, walk out the pose. And then planting both feet, let's round forward coming into plank, chaturanga. And then find cobra. We're going to stay in cobra for a moment. So play around. You don't have to come straight up into it. <sighs> Loosening up, warming up the body. So one of the kind of cool things about the grasshopper symbolism, which can be relatable to my buddy here, Ganesh, is that the grasshopper is going to show you a way around your obstacles. Not necessarily in the same way Ganesh does, but if you were to visualize a grasshopper hopping, just picture that he's showing you how to hop over your obstacles, right? New ways around them. Um, I think one of the parts of the symbolism I like best is, have you ever seen a grasshopper go backwards? No, you don't. They always go forwards, right? And so what a great reminder to keep moving forward. Um, if you're moving forward, you're not stuck in the past, right? And so as you think about that, Cobra is a great pose for remembering to move forward and come out of the past. The Cobra sheds its skin, the skin stays behind, and the skin and scales represent the past, right? So I want you to send the heart forward, lift up, imagine that you're shedding your skin, big inhale. Exhale, slowly bring the heart down. And we're gonna Bring the legs closer together, tops of the feet to the earth. Slide the hands further back so they're by the low ribs. Yeah? Okay, we're lifting up into upward facing dog. So upward body first, and then lift the thighs. Big inhale. Let the breath go. Start to lift the hips, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths right here. And then we're walking the feet forward all the way to the top of the mat, Uttanasana, forward fold. Just hang here for a second. So we did the seated fold, right? Same pose, we're just standing. But we've got gravity working on us a little bit here. So you're probably deeper into the fold than where I had you stop. Move around here, loosen up. I want you to notice a couple of things. And there's no right or wrong answer. I just want you to notice. Do your hands make it to the floor? They don't have to. Just want you to notice. If not, where are you? How far away are your fingers from your toes? Just so you have a guiding point, right? Just want you to pay attention to these things. No right or wrong. All right, inhale halfway to monkey. Remember, monkey can be with the fingertips on the earth or hands on the shin. The point is to lengthen the spine from the root chakra to the crown chakra. Lengthen, head and neck stay neutral, so I'm looking straight down. Big inhale. Exhale, slowly release into that fold. Inhale, monkey. 
Exhale, fold. Inhale, monkey. Last time, fold. So you're gonna eventually see why the fold is gonna be important in our baby grasshopper pose. Sink a little deeper here if you can. Good job. Round through the spine, bend the knees. We're just slowly rolling our way up. Ah, shoulders up toward the ears. Take them back and down. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, monkey. Exhale it down, bend into the knees, roll through the spine, come all the way up. So just half salutations, okay? Inhale the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, monkey. Let it go. Roll your way back up. Take the arms up. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, monkey. Exhale, bend into the knees, step back to plank. Here's your first vinyasa, chaturanga. Into cobra. Downward facing dog when you're ready. Things are loosening up, right? Warming up. Keep deepening the breath, not holding the breath. Stay right here. Big inhale. Loud exhale. Back to forward fold. Inhale, monkey. Exhale it down. Round your way all the way up. Reach the arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, monkey. I feel like Ganesh is here to be a, a reminder of obstacles. I'm just waiting to conk my head on one of his one of his forearms. Exhale, fold, bend into the knees, step back to plank, take your vinyasa. When you get to dog, strong inhale through the nose. Loud exhale. Good job. Back to forward fold. Take the arms into ragdoll and hang out right here. So in ragdoll, you wanna see if you can push the head through the arms. That might not happen. It's gonna depend on how tight the neck and shoulders are. And then release the hands right into monkey. Hold it here. Perfect. Okay, bend into the knees. Let's sit back down about the middle of our mat, stretching the legs out in front of us. We're gonna keep making some comparisons along the way. So Dandasana, staff. Sit up tall, hinge forward. See if this is a little easier, but I still want you to stop where you feel the stretch. Deep in the breath. Okay, maybe come just a tad lower if the muscles felt like they loosened up. So I know I'm lower than before. I can feel my ribs touching my thighs. They weren't there before. Everything is tight. And then just slide the hands back as you sit up. In fact, the hands are gonna continue behind you for reverse plank. So lean back, point through the ankles and lift on up. On your exhale, bring the hips back down. Ah, perfect. And so from here, I wanna draw that right knee in. Left hand or elbow hanging onto that knee, right hand behind you, front foot's flex. We are setting up for a nice, easy twist. Sit up tall. Exhale, take that twist to the right. Turn the head to look over the right shoulder.
And when you get to an exhale, go ahead, release the twist, switch legs. This twist is gonna be a little important later too. So <clears throat> we're warming up the spine in all sorts of fun directions. Inhale, exhale, twist to the left. So I said that grasshoppers represent or symb uh, symbolize uh, being a visionary. So on the flip side, they caution you to make sure you're not staying in the dream world, right? And so if you think about how near to the earth grasshoppers are, they're very grounded and rooted, and that's what's gonna kind of bring you back to reality, right? So we want that visionary look, we want to be able to manifest and move toward our goals, but we also want to stay rooted in reality. When you get to an exhale, release this twist, Send both legs back out, inhale the arms, palms together, exhale to the heart. Fabulous. Release the hands, bend the knees, take the feet super wide, push your way up into Malasana. And then just one quick push of the earth away. Come all the way up, reach the arms up, make the feet parallel, hands back to the heart. Turn the fingertips to the earth, forward fold. And my feet are kind of wide in this pose, but we have distance apart. So moving around here, is this feeling a little bit better? Inhale, monkey. Ah, exhale it down. Round through the spine, come all the way up, take the arms up. Exhale, bring the hands back through the heart center, forward fold. Inhale, monkey. Exhale, come down, bend into the knees, step back to plank. Chaturanga. Find your cobra, shed anything you need to. Exhale it down, downward facing dog. Deep inhale. Loud exhale. Perfect, let's take that right foot, send it forward for a low lunge. Stay right here for a moment, we're keeping that back leg lifted, so feel the thigh lifting without locking the knee. Look down, this front knee should be right over the ankle as well as it should not be tipping in or you know, to the center line. That knee needs to be pointing straight over the toe, so check that out too, lift the heart. Now turn that back foot, we're gonna plant it for warrior B. So the left arm is gonna lead and draw you all the way up. And just moving around, settling into your space here. Grasshoppers are constantly moving, right? They have their own rhythm, their own dance, and in fact, they're singing their own music. You can hear them often at night. So moving to your own inner beat, you should totally do that. Don't feel like you have to stay still all the time. Ah, let's take the arms up, exhale them back out to the sides, extended side angle, open that top shoulder up right here. Perfect. Warrior B, Virabhadrasana, cartwheel the hands back to the earth, pivot on the back foot as you step to plank, here's your vinyasa. We'll pause here for three breaths. So moving, you know, not crazily, right? This is a good pace. We're warming up the body, but use the deep breathing to warm up the inside of the body. Left foot is stepping forward for lunge. Double check that alignment of the front leg. Back thighs lifting, hearts forward. and then turn that back foot, right arm reaches forward to cartwheel. You all the way up, Virabhadrasana B, move around. Inhale the arms up, exhale them back. 
extended side angle. Open the top shoulder. Warrior B. Cartwheel the hands to the earth. Step back to plank. Chaturanga. Cobra. Child's pose. So as you close your eyes here, imagine that you also own and embrace one of the other characteristics of a grasshopper, which is camouflaged, right? They can camouflage easily. And can you kind of feel that as you cocoon into the loss in a child's pose? It's taking a few breaths right there. So grasshoppers actually, if you look them up, have a lot of symbolism. They symbolize luck, uh, resourcefulness, peace, abundance, uh, patience, insight, moving forward. And so they're a positive little friend if they enter your world. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, sink a little deeper and then pull yourself back up into table. All right, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. We are walking the legs forward all the way to the top of the mat, Uttanasana. Inhale, monkey. Exhale, let it go, bend into the knees, sit back down about the middle of your mat, stretch the legs out. We're doing another fold check here. So start off in Dandasana, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, begin to hinge forward, see if this feels a little bit looser. And so again, no right or wrong answer, just notice you know, when you were standing in your fold, I asked you to notice, could you touch your toes? Could you touch the floor? Where were your hands in relationship to your feet? I just want you to notice that now as well. It's going to give us some insight when we get to uh, baby grasshopper uh, later, because we'll know then if we need to use a strap or not. Can we reach the feet? Wherever you are hanging on, I want you to pull, so heart moves forward. Lengthen through the crown and see if you can come out just a little bit more. It's the crown of the head reaching that's pulling you down. You're feeling very grounded and rooted here, right? Earthy like the grasshopper. Keep breathing. If and when you feel the hamstrings loosen up a little, you can come a little deeper, but still pulling the head forward. Just imagine. I have very kindly and compassionately grabbed the hair on the top of your head and I'm pulling you forward. Nice job. Walk the hands back up. Draw that right knee and set up for your twist again. So if you had the hand in front, let's see if we can take the elbow just to make this a little bit deeper. Inhale, sit up. Exhale, take that twist to the right. So if you the first time had your elbow hooked and you want to take this deeper, I probably should have turned and done the other direction first, just take the arm to the outside of that bent knee. And so the arm and the leg are gently pushing against each other. On an exhale, slowly release this twist. Ah, perfect, switch legs again. Set up your alignment first. Remember, we always inhale and lengthen, and then we exhale and twist. And if you wanna deepen this, take the arm to the outside of that bent leg and let them push off of each other as you sit up taller.
Okay, wait for that exhale. And then release the twist. Perfect. We're going to take a moment to lay back. Hug the knees into the heart. Drop both knees to the left. Keep the left hand on top of the right knee. Right arm in scarecrow. Right shoulder blade is down. My left hand's actively pushing down on the right knee just to get a little more stretch out of this twist. And then switch sides. come back to center. We're going to set the feet down on the mat for a moment. Realign the hips, bring the arms back down. Okay, so this is going to be a quadricep stretch. Um, it could be a little intense. I want you to be careful getting into it, and if you want to watch me do it first, that's totally fine. If you have a strap nearby, that might help you out too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hug my left knee in with my right hand on top. Okay, that's the easy part. The left hand is reaching down alongside me. So it's closer to the right foot, right? I want to wiggle my right foot over to my left hand so I can grab onto the toes. Now, this is where you might find you need the strap around the ankle of the right foot so that you're able to reach the foot, right? Now, here's where the quad stretch comes in. So I'm going to hang on to the right foot. I'm just setting that foot down on the ground, slowly drop the right knee to the earth. Now, here's where this gets interesting, right? Your knee might only fall halfway before you feel this in the quad and you, that's, that's it. Hold it there. Don't go any further. If you can get that whole thigh to come down and the knee to come down, I need you to breathe into the stretch and relax. Just try to relax. <sighs> So for me, I can get my leg down. It's pretty intense in the quad. I have to keep reminding myself with each exhale, let go. Don't hang on with the right leg. That leg wants to just kind of grip so it knows it's safe. It's safe. It's fine. Now, let's say you um, can get the leg down, but this is painful. I don't want you in pain. One thing you could do is grab a prop nearby and slide it underneath that right knee. So you're still getting the stretch, but it isn't so much strain on those muscles for you. So remember, we started out by saying we're practicing a heel, so you have to do what's right for you. If you cannot get a hold of this foot and you don't have a strap, that's okay. You know, just do what you can do, right? Maybe they're reaching in each other's direction. They're waving at each other, and, you know, they're social distancing, so it's all good. All right, big inhale here. Exhale, release that right foot. Ah, bring it around to hug it in. When you're ready, set the left foot down on the mat. Left hand up on top of the right knee. Right arm's reaching down alongside you. The left foot's gonna wiggle its way over so the right hand can grab onto the toes and then slowly drop the thigh and left knee down to the earth. Keep hugging the right knee in and relax. Again, notice if you're holding the muscles in the left leg. Can you soften them? A 
couple more breaths here. I think I talked a lot on the first side, so we want we want to play fair. Okay, big inhale. Exhale, release the left foot, bring that leg back up, hug the knees in. And then let's rock our way back up to a sitting pose. Stretch the legs back out when you get here. Sit up nice and tall, hinge forward. Let's just see where this fold is, take it slowly. Crown of the head, reaching for the feet. So hopefully you're noticing that we're forget progressively getting lower, right? I still haven't forced my way all the way down. I'm just stopping where it feels right. Good job. Make your way back up. Bend the knees, take them wide. Push yourself back up into the lasana at the top of your mat. Push the earth away, stand all the way up. Make the feet parallel, reach the arms up, exhale them back through the heart center. Fingers turn to the earth, guiding you into Uttanasana. Inhale, monkey. Exhale it down. Wiggle the feet back in. And then you can step, hop, fly, jump. Ooh. We should hop, we're talking about grasshoppers. Let's hop back. So bend into the knees, plant the hands. You gotta have the hands planted or this hop's not gonna work, right? So if you need to bend the knees considerably, go ahead. And then really, my best advice is just don't think about it, just do it. Jump right back. Nice, even though I said grasshoppers don't go backwards. Chaturanga. Inhale, Cobra, hold it here, move around. Shedding anything left behind that you didn't get rid of the first time. Perfect, release down, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. Good job, right foot is stepping forward for lunge. Get your balance there and come on up into a high lunge, sink down. The back thigh is still lifting outward, right? We haven't bent into that knee. Breathe. Hands to the heart. Option A, stay right here. Option B, twist of the upper body and shoulders to the right side. On an exhale, back to center. Release the hands. Step back to plank. Smile. Downward facing dog. All right, one more deep inhale, let it go. Left foot is stepping forward for a high lunge when you have your balance. Hands to the heart, either stay here or take that twist to the left. Good job. Exhale, center. Release the hands. Step back to plank. Find your vinyasa. And then from dog, we're walking, or just take one big step to the middle of your mat. Cross one ankle behind you, sit back down. Stretch the legs out. <sighs> Close your eyes for a moment. Okay. This pose will also come in handy. Take the left leg, bend it, bring that knee in as close as you can get it. 
If you have a strap, you might want it. Mine's in a loop, just ignore that. You might want it behind you. If you don't have a strap, are we worried about it? No, we are not. Okay, sit up nice and tall. I want you to get that left arm inside of the left knee. Maybe I should turn. Inside, right? I'm going to lengthen, just like we've been practicing in our fold, and hinge forward a little bit. That left arm is reaching straight out, like I want to shake your hand, and then turn the hand, the palm, outside. Perfect. This left arm is coming out to your side. Get low enough that the tricep gets stuck in front of the left knee, and then the palm rotates upwards and reaches back. Right, so the palm, the arm comes around, palm starts to turn upwards, and the hand ends up over by the left hip, with, with any luck. But we're talking about grasshoppers, so we already said that they're lucky, right? Right hand comes around to find the left hand. This is where you might want to strap if the hands can't find each other, right? Now, I want you to sit up. And I want you to root down through both sit bones. What do I mean by that? Well, it's very possible that getting into this bind took you into the right hip so you can catch this left leg. Are you sitting down on both sit bones? Breathe. Let's just say option A, this might be a heck of enough, right? Option B is going to be to come into a fold here. As much fun as you're having here, this will help you get into um, baby grasshopper. Breathe, top of the head, reaching for the toes on the right foot that are pulling back towards you. Good job, okay. You can slowly let go of the strap, your shirt, your hands, and gently, peacefully make your way back up. Take that left foot, pull it across to the other side of the right thigh. Okay, we're setting up for another twist. So right elbow is gonna hook the left knee. Inhale your length, exhale your twist. On an exhale, release. Oh, perfect. Stretch out that left leg, give it some help if it needs it. And then go ahead and pull that right knee in. Remember, we're gonna sit up tall. We're gonna get the right arm inside of that knee. I'm gonna hinge forward a little bit just because it makes it easier to get this arm to wrap around. So right arm reaches forward, turn the palm outward. As the arm comes around behind you, I've got the wall in my way a little bit here the palm will turn to face up and that hand will come around to the right hip. Left hand comes around behind to grab on and then we're sitting up. Again, make sure you're rooted. Can you get into both sit bones? Hang out here or go ahead and add that fold. Crown reaching for the toes, no matter how far apart they are, they're reaching. Remember, if you're grasshopper, we're innovators, we're visionaries, we're constantly moving forward. We're, we're based in reality, but we have these fabulous dreams, and we jump over our obstacles and challenges to achieve them. When you're ready, release the hands, start to slowly come back up. I'm gonna take that right foot, bring it to the outside of the left thigh, hook that front knee with my left elbow, sit up nice and tall, deep breath in, exhale to the right.
When you're ready, go ahead and release your twist. Stretch out that front leg. If you got that strap behind you, move it out of your way. All right, straighten out the legs. Full fold this time. Paschimottanasana. Take the arms up, lengthen, come on forward, and just end up wherever you end up. So again, crown of the head reaching for the feet. If you actually have a hold of your feet, you can pull on them to help lengthen the spine towards the toes. I want you to take eight fabulous breaths right here. When you finish that eighth breath, I'm gonna to start to use my hands to walk me in. I'm gonna round through the spine and just very slowly, taking me sweet time, come back up. Ah, perfect, go ahead and just take your hands behind you for a second. Shake out the legs. Are you ready? It's like a drum roll, right? Getting ready for that pose we've been working towards. <laughs> Baby grasshopper. Okay. So, uh, there are two variations uh, that I want to show you to baby grasshopper. And so maybe you'll find one is easier than the other. I don't know. They both, I, truly, this pose is so much easier to get into than it looks like it should be. So, I promise you that. All right. I'm just moving over because I don't have a lot of room here. But what I want you to do is take the right foot to the outside of the left thigh, just like we did when we took our twist. Um, if you have a strap, you might want to have it nearby. I want to kind of roll into my left hip, right on the side of the hip, um, bringing my hands out in front of me to support me. And then I want you to look at that left foot. How far away is it? We've done a lot of folds. Were you able to reach your foot? If so, I know you can do it here. I want to lean in and take my right arm out to the side and grab onto the big toe. If you need to bend the bottom leg to grab the toe, that's okay, but then I need you to re-straighten that leg. If you are thinking there is no way in dot, 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 that I can reach my foot, that's what you're gonna use your strap for. So I can catch that foot and I can hang on to it. I need a pretty good grip. So I'm gonna let you settle into that space for a moment. I promise you, don't think about this, just do it. Okay, so what I wanna do is really get on the front of that left hip. One, two, three, lift up. So I'm on my left hand and my, I have to look, my right foot. My left leg, it's hard to see in the video. My left leg's not touching the ground at all. It's parallel to the ground. And then come back down. So the other variation you can try is to come onto your left forearm. I'm not sure, I don't know, they both seem doable to me. So I think this one feels a little bit more challenging to lift the leg, but I want you to think about you're not lifting the leg, you're lifting your core, you're lifting your hips. Use the core muscles to do all the lifting. So give this pose a shot, and then come back down. I'm gonna wait here for a few minutes while you play on that side. Of course, we're gonna balance and play on the other side, so I wish I could see all these baby grasshoppers, but I'm sure they're going well. We have maximized our stretching to get into that pose, and grasshoppers are lucky, and they show you how to jump over your obstacles. So this pose is not the obstacle. What is? Couple more breaths here to try out this side. I'm gonna turn around so I can do the other side facing you and not the wall. 
All right, when you're ready, let's come back to center. Let's shake that out. So left foot coming across the right thigh. I'm going to tip into my right hip so I can shift a little bit. I really want to get on the side of that hip. I want to get my right arm straight down underneath me. My elbow is brushing up against my side ribs. I'm looking at that foot. I'm waving at it. I want to get the left arm in front of my knee and grab onto the big toe or use your strap. In fact, if you don't have a strap and you can't reach the foot, you could grab the ankle, grab the shin, whatever you need to do, right? And then don't think about lifting the leg, just lift up the hips and the core, breathe, and come back down. Again, you can try this on the forearm if you want to. I think I need to scooch back a little bit. So for me, I mean, frankly, my arms are tired. I was lifting weights before this class, but for me on this side, the forearm is easier. But on the other side, it was easier coming up on my hands. So there's no right or wrong. We're just listening to our body. Keep playing. Don't give up. I'm waiting for you. I promise we've already done all the work. We did everything we needed to, to warm up the right muscles, to try out this pose. We've already talked about the, you know, no obstacles. Let's say it's a challenge, maybe. couple more breaths. I think this pose is kind of fun. If you found it fun, you found it relatively easy. Um, like I said, you can go to my Facebook page and look for um, Grasshopper, which is a little bit more detailed to get into. All good? Okay, I'm pretending I heard you like you're done. <laughs> okay, let's come back to center. Uh, onto your back, hug the knees into the heart. You deserve it. Rock this out from hip to hip. And then go ahead and stretch out the right leg. Hug the left knee in, prep for your supine twist. Sending the arms wherever you need to. I'm gonna send my left arm all the way overhead. And then take your twist, trying to keep that left shoulder down. And then very slowly, we're just gonna take that left knee. I'm rolling onto my back. My leg is actually staying the way it is. So the knee's staying bent. When I get to my back, I'm gonna let the left knee open all the way to the ground so I'm in a supine tree pose, Vrikasana. You can send the arms wherever you want to. If this is too much of a hip opener for the left hip, just slide something underneath that knee to hold it up. Empty out the lungs. Slow, deep, fulfilling inhale. As you exhale, go ahead and straighten out that left leg. Bring the arms back down. And then when you're ready, that probably feels like you want to stay right there. Hug the right knee in.
Take it into your supine twist. When you're ready, you're just gonna open that right knee back up, take it all the way into supine tree with the sole of the right foot against the inner left thigh. Empty the lungs, slow inhale. As you exhale, slowly straighten out that right leg as you bring the arms back down alongside you. And then widen out the feet to the width of the mat. Turn the toes in for a moment. and then let the feet be. Ah, push the back of the head into the ground, lift the shoulders, slide the shoulder blades down and underneath you, resettle on top of them. And then your arms are comfortably at your side but not touching you, palms are open. Deep inhale. Cleansing exhale. Another inhale. Cleansing exhale. And as you settle into Shavasana, if you're not squeamish about grasshoppers and it's okay with you, why don't you visualize your little friend and see what messages and signs he has to offer you directly? If that is not going to happen, that's okay. Perhaps you set the intention that whatever you need to know from this totem animal comes to you as you simply drift away.
the grasshopper comes to remind you that if you are feeling stuck in any way in your present life, that you should listen to your intuition and go ahead and take that jump forward to leave behind any hindrances and to always listen to that inner music that you create within it should never be silenced. Begin to deepen your breath. Bring some movement back into the hands and feet. And then very peacefully roll to a side in a fetal position. feel ready, go ahead and gently push your way back up to a seated pose. Deep breath in through the nose. Super loud exhale. Inhale, both arms up, bring the palms together, and exhale them back home to your heart in prayer pose. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me, and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste.